Well, that last lesson has my head spinning. Pajari left us with thoughts of metaphysical hogwash more than he did actual facts. But what in the world does it all mean? It's obvious there's a basis in fact that he tries to reach from, but how does it tie in with Guardians? There have been many Guardians throughout history who have gone to their second death. They knew the risks and the repercussions afterwards, yet there's a distinct lack of fear. Fear is what should keep any Guardian alive, but it seems impossible, and eventual loss of it has backfired. Now I have to keep the fear. Do you realize that? I suppose there's a layer of truth to that. Guardians no longer have fear of death. Wait, yes we do. Did you completely forget about Dwindler's Ridge and Shin Malfur? Jaren Ward, shot and killed by Dredgen Yor, drained of his light and lost forever due to Thorn. No ghost could bring someone back from that. Granted, I suppose in most cases it still holds true. Hmm. Ah, yes, the exploits of Lady Perun and the Iron Lords. A hail of bullets slammed into their shields. Perun, Radagast, and the Saladin slid backwards on the dusty path, but they dug in their heels and the shields held. Return fire! Trapped in the narrow path, Sagoth and his warriors fell one by one. Perun, Radagast, and Saladin reloaded, and then Sagoth was up again, his glowing ghost at his shoulder. He fired wildly, and a bullet struck Radagast in the head. Got him! Perun shouted as Radagast collapsed. Covering you, Saladin returned. Perun, Radagast, and Saladin died many more times than any one of Sagoth's men, but any time one of them fell, another would cover them until they staggered to their feet again. The shield wall held. The three gave no ground. Finally, his robe singed and ragged, Sagoth signaled a retreat. Iron Wolves, he shouted as his warriors scattered and a cheer went up from the people in the Silver Ruins. I will slaughter every one who has ever sheltered you. In answer, Perun shot him again. They had the right idea to protect their ghost and keep each other covered. I suppose that's a good basis to understand why a ghost has to stay covered, or how we have to always think of the other. Suppose that's why fire teams are so important, as Lord Shax might say. Who and what you are referencing are the points in history where the light has shined the brightest? I'm referring to the more dull times, for lack of a better word. The deaths in the Crucible have no real bearing since there's such strenuous supervision. But what about the time in the field? Even patrols have a significant risk. If you were to be sniped down by a vandal, I would have to endure a window in time which the same wire rifle can pluck me out of existence. Well, you still have the Veil of Light to cover you for at least a brief period of time, but your point is well taken. Similar to the stories that Eris Morn had told us where the Hive have technology that can literally pluck light from the air and seep it from a ghost, I will have to concede that you all have great risk passed against you, yes. Then again, I recall a story from an Exo friend that played with death, just like a Thanantinot, like Pajari may have done. Hi, uh, thanks for your interest. I'm recording this for posterity. Warlock Thanantinots die and come back with insight. I'm going to attempt the same process to get at buried memories. Specifically, I'm going to fire a charged particle beam into my head and see what comes out. We Exos have been around a very long time. I want to know what's in there. My ghost is standing by to repair me. Okay, three... Two, one, stag, Echo Six, sword, Sierra Nine, serpent. We are falling into the world. Everyone is on fire. There's a ship above us, but it's coming apart just like a flower. Alloy and fusion flash pierced through and through. There are times I wish this Nantanon's work was completely wiped from the archives. I may possess the power to resurrect you from a plethora of different deaths within seconds, but to condone such researches, it lacks the respect for the phenomenon. To continually die again and again does things to a person's mind. I've seen guardians start to question the fabric of reality, wondering if this is all real or if they're simply living through echoes of time. That kind of mental degradation leads to carelessness. Not caring what life count you're on now leads to permanent second death. 
You almost sound to be referencing Albios from talks like this. Not that we know much of him or his past, but a story, and even then, that's just a tale. We're not even sure how fragmented his being or minds were, even how we were able to uncover the truth with that Ahamkara he was talking to. Still, enlighten me. Maybe there's something else I'm missing about this unsure nature of life. I've read a bit from Clovis Bray and Ishtar having similar records. Talk of something called PTSD and other psychosis. Perhaps it can expand on theory I already have. Then again, there is Banshee. Do you remember the first time you were resurrected from your first death? The gasping for air? The unfamiliarity with the world and how it had changed after so long? Now you, all you have to deal with is the same rattling of your lungs in the first few seconds you missed. What if you're alone? We're alone. And then you die in a shadow that I cannot bring you back from for a longer time than just a few seconds. A few months, a year, a, a century. You lose who you are with every passing second while you're dead because the galaxy has gone on without you. Every death is meant to be a lesson. Rare insight on how to improve, not a threshold for entertainment because you want to know what lies beyond the edge. Aha! But that is precisely what the Thanatonauts serve to uncover and understand. That rare insight, the bits into our past, present, and future. Future Warcult does it their way. Thanatonauts do it their own way. That is why I feel the need to reference the story of the Shores of Time with Pajari, his vision that he had of that ghost-shaped rose. How can we explain that away? How can we not find the idea of death revealing to another level of ourselves? We don't even know what we are. We just exist. We'll follow that big ball up in the sky that brought low our own civilization after promising us peace and accelerated learning, but here we are. <sighs> Great, now you have me sounding like Osiris. Still, I remember a story from Ikora about her ghost feeling this way. Perhaps I should reread it. The Guardian gasps awake like the breath was ripped out instead of restored. The ghost floats closer, not masking his agitation. You did it on purpose. Died. On purpose. I saw. The Guardian flips a hand impatiently. So what? Death is waiting for us every minute of every day. If I grab it by the throat, that's no different from me tripping over in the dark before you bring me back. You know that the difference is intent. Guardians do not seek death. They embrace it as part of their sacrifice. They let sing song now. They learn from it and they grow stronger. Come on, I've learned more about being a guardian out here than from any of your speaker's sermons under the Traveler. Whether or not a knight slices my throat before I die. The ghost looks hurt. My Cora, you don't... Later. We're going back to Trossland. I'm not going to grow any stronger sitting here pulling pine needles out of my face. She walks away, eyes brighter than her ghosts in the dark. He floats in place, silent, and then follows. Now you're out of line. Completely out of line. The Traveler brought all these gifts, brought all this life. You cannot blame it for what came after. From my understanding, from before its arrival, humanity tore itself apart over the most mundane things such as politics and religion. Humanity will always have curiosity, which you seem to have an abundance of, but it will always have its thirst for warfare, which is where you and Exo come from. The Traveler brought life, which is why the ghost-shaped rose has such significance. I am your rose. I am your life. If you wish to blame the Traveler for the hardships, then you must in turn blame me. You only have yourself to blame for every death, yet I am to blame for every life. What kind of distorted mentality is that? I think you may have died too many times already, if that's what you truly believe. Now, now, my friend, it's simply postulation and open thinking. You know that. Still, I suppose that pans back to why we're here to begin with. We know that ghosts and guardians can die, and can, in turn, suffer that final death, or as far as we know. The Traveler being awake does throw up a few other questions that are worth exploring, after all. But perhaps it's for another day. 
Anything else you need to get off your chest before I wonder if you'll revive me next time I'm researching? If I had hair, it would be gray because of you. You're absolutely exasperating. But I guess that's why I picked you over everyone else I came across. It would be a long, boring eternity if I was a ghost to someone who didn't question everything. So this is a bad time to tell you I've been recording this whole conversation? You what?